Sperm whales were hunted in the 18th and early 19th century for spermaceti, which was used extensively as a lubricant across various industries until crude oil made its way to civilization. Awareness of ambergris existed during that period in time, but it was not the exclusive purpose, as is widely speculated, for hunting sperm whales. Ambergris has held its value through time and centuries and has historically been used, notably in the perfume industry and even the alternative medicine space. It is estimated that ambergris is produced in the digestive system of just 1% of all sperm whales. This is, however, a theory that has no scientific backing, and given the amount of ambergris that is being found lately across the world, that percentage could be significantly higher. The sperm whale's global population uh, in 2020 is estimated to be just under 400,000 as on date and is growing. Uh, the sperm whale's diet is mainly composed of squid, invertebrates with a sharp horny beak. Given that these beaks are not digestible, they will normally accumulate in the stomach, slipping into the intestines where they create a blockage of sorts. The lump that forms around these blocks over a period of time, sometimes years, often causes distress to the mammal before being finally expelled from its body via the rectum. When it cannot be expelled, it can prove fatal for the whale and uh, as is the popular notion that ambergris can be vomit, well, that's not true since a sperm whale has a four-chambered stomach. Yes, four. Thus, it is highly unlikely that it will regurgitate and expel food that it cannot digest. Accumulating in the intestine, the secretion-coated beaks likely end up forming aggregates that are either eliminated with feces or continue to build up and potentially block the intestine or even the anus. In such cases, the mass of ambergris could cost the sperm whale its life. While ambergris is found in varying colors, shapes, textures and sizes, some of which you've seen in this video already, thereby making it very difficult for beachcombers worldwide to identify the real deal. Here is a classic example of a good quality ambergris piece and how it looks from within. So this is one piece and we've cut it open. In conclusion, I would like to point out that ambergris is not floating gold as is widely advertised. You're more likely to find it sitting at a beach than floating in the seas. Also, the best quality of ambergris sells for half the price of gold, which is still a lot of money, but then that's the best quality we are talking about. 80% of ambergris finds are what the industry folks call it as medium quality or brown ambergris. This sells for one fourth the price of gold. I have repeatedly maintained, even in my other posts, that this should not be seen as a treasure hunt, rather a dedicated full-time occupation where people work very hard in the right places and in conditions uh, which are under the right parameters. They consistently find ambergris and take pride in their success and humility. As they say, with great power, comes great responsibility. With that, I thank you for your time uh, and, you know, and